right, Algebra 1, Lesson 10, and this is on division by zero, exchange of factors in multiplication, and then also conversions of area. Okay, the first thing I want you to understand is um, we're going to talk about division by zero. And what I mean by that is if you were to get an answer, for example, 4 minus 2 minus 2 over 13. Okay, let's do this problem real quick, okay? 4 to take away 2 is 2, 2 to take away 2 is 0. So the answer would be 0 over 13. This is fine to have 0 in the numerator. It would just equal 0, okay? But let's flip this around and do 13 divided by 4 minus 2 minus 2. 4 minus 2 minus 2 is 0, and then we get the 13 on top. If you were to type this in your calculator, 13 divided by 0, you will get something like error, undefined, not able, something. It will show that this is impossible to do. And so what I want you to understand is that um, you cannot divide by 0. Um, in your denominator. And so you would just tell me that the answer is undefined. That is the answer, okay? It does not work. It is an error, okay? So make sure you're remembering that. It's okay to get zero in the numerator, but you cannot get zero in the denominator because 13 divided by nothing doesn't work. <laughs> so, now, um, let's talk about something... Um, this is exchange of factors in the multiplication, and basically it's the commutative property. And I hope you remember that co the commutative property of multiplication basically means if I say 3 times 4 is 12, well, guess what? 4 times 3 is 12. No matter how I change these numbers around, it still gives me the same answer. That's what the commutative property states. So, because of that, I can take a problem like this. Okay, and I can do 2 times the 4, I can do the, then 6 times 3 and then multiply them all, or I can do 4 times 3 and then that times 6 and then that times 2. It doesn't matter because no matter how you turn or switch the numbers, you're going to multiply and get the same answer. Okay, that works with addition and multiplication. Now, so what I want to kind of give you is a, a hint today, and um, we talked about it briefly a week or so ago, but I want to I share it with you again, okay? You're actually going to go pretty heavy into this, I think in like lesson 15, 16, something like that. But let me go on and just quickly tell you, okay? How many negative signs do you see? There are three of them, okay? If you see an odd number of negative signs, your answer will always be negative, if you get an odd number of negatives, if you get an odd number of negatives, the answer will be negative. If you get an even number of negatives, meaning two negatives, four negatives, six, eight, ten, twelve negative numbers, then your answer will always be a positive answer. Okay, those are just two quick um, clues. So when you see something like this, the first thing this says is negative 4 times 3 times negative 6 times negative 2. And I just want to encourage you that you can look at this and go, okay, I have 1 negative, 2 negatives, 3 negatives. It is an odd number of negatives. So my answer is going to be negative. So I'm going to go in and write equals negative. And then all you have to do is multiply 4 times 3, 12. 12 times 6, 72. 72 times 2, 144. And the answer is negative 144. Why? Because we had three odd number, three negative numbers, which is odd. Three is odd. Okay, let's try a few more with this same concept. Negative 6 times negative 2 times 3 times negative 4. Okay? This one, how many do we have? One, two, three. It's an odd number again, so my answer is going to be negative. So when I work this problem, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 4 is 144. 
okay? So, um, either way, you're st we're still getting the same answer, okay? And basically, they just changed up the numbers. I don't know if you noticed that. And we just did um, different, we did 6 times 2 instead of um, 4 times 3 earlier. So, um, we still figured out the exact same answer, all right? Um, again, if I even changed it up differently using the same exact numbers, just turning them around, putting the four in a different spot, etc., then I'm going to end up getting negative 144. Why? Because, again, there's three, which is an odd number. And then six times four is 24. 24 times three is, I'm not real sure, times two is going to end up equaling 144. Just, I don't want to do the math right now. I'm just trying to teach you a simple um Show, just show you something different today. So um, just remember this, and, and we'll go really heavily into this shortly, but just kind of get your mind thinking in that way, okay? Now, let's talk about conversions of area. Um, in this, um, we're going to convert, we're going to take unit multipliers, and we've talked about that, but let's talk about it a little bit deeper, okay? And the question is, or the problem is, use two unit multipliers to convert, they're wanting us to convert 44 square inches. So I'm going to put inches squared, same thing. 44 square inches or 44 inches squared. And they're wanting us to convert that to square centimeters or centimeter squared. Okay? Now, this is huge for you to realize. I cannot... Um, say it enough that you see that this is not just, we're not converting 44 inches to centimeters, we're converting 44 inches squared to centimeters squared. It's very important, okay? So hopefully you remember from our unit multipliers is, is there a conversion that goes from inches to centimeters? And hopefully you do know that two, actually one inch, one inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters. And 2.54 centimeters is the same thing as one inch. Hopefully you know that off the bat, okay? That is something you definitely need to memorize if you don't already know. Now, now that I've got my two unit multipliers, what I'm doing is I'm converting the 44 inches squared to the centimeters squared. So we're going from inches to squared. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to take the 44 inches squared, and I'm going to multiply that. Since I'm converting it to centimeters squared, I want my centimeters on top. 2.54 centimeters, okay? Now, I'm going to erase this unit multipliers right here just because I have to do something with this, okay? Do you see how that says 44 inches squared? Well, we are taking, since this is centimeters squared, I want you to watch what you're going to do. You're going to take this 44 inches, watch what I do, times inches. Why did I do that? Because inches times inches makes inches squared. Now that's important, okay? But we don't stop there. The next thing you're going to do is, I don't know if you noticed this, but it says use two unit multipliers, okay? The reason why you're using two is because we're converting it not just to centimeters, we're converting it to centimeters squared. So we actually have to use um, our unit multiplier twice. So watch what I do. 2.54 centimeters is the same thing as one inch. Remember that? And 2.54 centimeters is the same thing as one inch. Now, what does this do? It takes this squared, because now I have centimeters and centimeters, which makes centimeters squared. And I also have inches and inches, which makes inches squared. Now, watch what happens. Inches, 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 inches. You see that why it was important that we did it like that? Okay? Now you're just going to multiply, put this over 1, and then just multiply 44 times 2.54 times 2.54, and we end up getting, they actually don't tell me the full answer, they just say 44 times 2.54 times 2.54 
centimeters squared because centimeter and centimeter make centimeter squared. You see that? So this was their final answer. Now if you were to do it on a calculator, um, obviously you would get a different answer um, because it would give you the full answer, okay? But just in the book without working it out and not using a calculator, this is how they answer it, okay? Let's do another one just so we're kind of working through this squared concept. Um, all right, here's what it says. Use four unit multipliers. Now pay attention, I'm going to explain what that means. To convert 125 square centimeters, or centimeter squared, to square feet. So we're going from centimeter squared to feet squared. And hopefully you know right off the bat that we cannot go from centimeters to feet. There's no unit multiplier that we know in our heads that how many centimeters equal a foot, okay? But we do know that centimeters can go into inches and then inches can go into feet. Hopefully you realize that. So let's write down these conversions. Um, 2.54 centimeters is the same thing as one inch. Okay, and one inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters. Okay, that helps us when we're moving from centimeters to inches, but now we have to go to inches to feet. So, how many inches are in a foot? 12 inches is the same thing as one foot, and one foot is the same thing as 12 inches. Okay, now, these are my unit multipliers that I will possibly use, depending on which one I think I need, in working with this problem. But remember, we're going from centimeters, then to inches, then from inches into feet. So let's do our first step and go from centimeters squared to inches squared. Because we're wanting to go from centimeters to inches, I'm going to want to put the down here what we're doing. We're going to go from centimeters to inches and then inches to feet. Okay? And we're actually going to be doing centimeters squared, inches squared, and feet squared because we're wanting to convert it to feet squared. This is important. So, let's figure out this. What I'm going to do is going to take 125 centimeters, and it's squared, so I'm going to put times centimeters. Okay, and I'm going to put that over 1. And which one am I going to multiply it by? Well, I'm wanting to change it from centimeters squared to inches squared. So, it's going to be one of these two, centimeters to inches or inches to centimeters, okay? Well, we're wanting to change it to inches, centimeters to inches squared, so I'm going to use the one with the inches on top, okay? So I'm going to put one inch, same thing as 2.54 centimeters, times one inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters, okay? Now, this is just taking us from centimeters squared to inches squared, okay? Then we have another one to do to go to feet squared. So, if I was going to work this, hopefully you notice right off the bat is that centimeters and that centimeter marks out. The second centimeter and that centimeter marks out. So now all we've got left is inches and inches, which is, gives us an inches squared answer, which is what we want. So 125 times 1 times 1 ends up 125 inches squared over 1 times 2.54 times 2.54. And yes, this is exactly what the book did. They went 2.54 times 2.54. And that's how they answered it. Okay, but we're not done yet. Okay, now stay with me. This is our answer, answer in inches squared form. So I'm going to bring it back over here. 125 inches squared over 2.54 times 2.54, which we never figured out what that equaled. Okay? Now, hopefully you can see we went from centimeters to inches squared. See how our answer's in inches squared form? Now we're going to go from inches squared to feet squared. So, we're done with these. Now we're going from inches to feet. If we're converting to feet, then I want my feet on top. So, feet on top. One foot is the same thing as 12 inches. See that? I'm going to multiply it by that. Now, hopefully you also remember that this inch is squared. I'm going to make inches times inches because it's important that I have two to um, cancel out. So, one foot 
over 12 inches. Again, on this one, that gives us inches to cross out this one and inches to cross out this one. That way our answer ends up being in feet, feet times feet. So, let's go on and do that. Inches crosses out that inches, that inches crosses out that inches. And all we have left is 120 times, 125 times one times one, which equals 125 feet squared over, and the final answer is basically, this is how the book writes it, 2.54 times 2.54 times 12 times 12. And that's how they leave the answer. Um, now you could actually do it on the calculator and get the final answer, and that's fine. But they're basically showing um, that this is the answer. 2.54 times 2.54 times 12 times 12 for our denominator, and our top is 125 feet squared. And that is lesson 10.